Let's all stand to our feet, and we'd ask our brother Steve if you'd invite the presence of the Lord to be with us tonight. seated. Just keep me in prayer. I've got a, uh, well, preaching without a microphone to uh, about over 50 people. Um, kind of scratches up your throat and then you get on the plane and there's all kinds of stuff floating around. So I've got a little bit of a sore throat right now. But uh, anyway, um, it's always good to be home. Although I have to say that if you were there, you would feel such a kindred spirit. Uh, those people in Poland, there's uh, over 50, I think it was 53 we had attend. And um, we had uh, eight countries represented. We had Australia, England, Belgium, uh, of course, Poland and Czech Republic, and uh, Norway and Sweden, yes. And uh, people from all those countries are following along with us either directly uh, or um, as in Poland and Czech, they uh, translate the sermons, and we have about close to, it was 195 when I left, but I think they've done some more since because of these sermons that I preached over there, so um, we're getting close to 200 sermons in, in the Polish language now, and uh, just a real lovely spirit, and you would have felt at home with those people. Number 201, my soul doth magnify the Lord. <clears throat> My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit doth rejoice in God, my Savior, for he that is mighty hath done unto me great things, and holy is his name. My soul doth magnify the Lord, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit doth rejoice in God my Savior. For he that is mighty hath done unto me great things, and holy is his name. My soul doth magnify the Lord, <clears throat> and my spirit doth rejoice in God my Savior, for he that is mighty hath done unto me great things. And holy is his name. My soul doth magnify the Lord. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit doth rejoice in God my Savior. For he that is mighty hath done unto me great things, and holy is his name. Amen. In 154, the Lord is righteous. <clears throat> The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy 
in all His worth. The Lord is nigh unto all that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear Him. He also will hear their cry and save them, all that call upon Him in truth. <clears throat> the Lord is righteous in all His ways and holy in all His works. The Lord is nigh unto all that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear Him. He also will hear their cry and save them, all that call upon Him in truth. <clears throat> Amen. Number 177. Make me a servant. Make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant, make me a servant, make me a servant today. Make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant. Make me a servant. Make me a servant today. <coughs> Amen. Before we go to prayer, uh, has anybody heard if the UN took their vote today to make Palestine a nation? It was supposed to be brought up today by the French government. I haven't heard whether it took place or not. If it did, then, uh, well, it's, it's I mean, we already know it's all over since 1956, but that's a long time ago. But still, it's... Uh, anyway, let's just keep one another in prayer that... Uh, the Lord prepares us for the going home. Don't know when. I think this fall begins to squeeze. I think, yeah. Uh, Rhoda was notified us today that she finally got her phone call and everything is getting set up. Good. Let's keep Rhoda in prayer. Josh, it's been a long time to be married and not be together. So just uh, pray that she'll get her, uh, get to come over here and uh, <clears throat> she'll be, uh, they'll have a blessed uh, marriage together. And uh, let's continue to pray for uh, uh, Sister Rebecca and Sister Heidi. They're still traveling. I actually took them 24 hours to go from Poland to Germany, which uh, should only take a few hours by rail, but the border was closed. And you know they're closing the borders of uh, Hungary and, and uh, uh, Germany and France and uh, different nations there. Um, 
what's happening is the Serbians and different Muslims are coming over and uh, well they said Serbia I heard today Serbians yeah I had heard I had heard Syria before but they're saying Serbians now maybe they had it wrong but uh, I know there's a lot of turmoil our government uh, created Isis and Isis has caused a lot of problems uh, both Christians and Muslims are leaving because you know, basically Isis don't care if you're Christian or Muslim or whatever if you're not one of them they'll kill you so they got a very denominational spirit put it that way very organizational minded uh, but anyway just keep them in prayer uh, it took them a long time and they, of course they they'll be there for about a week I think and then they're going home maybe a couple and uh, um, just pray for Justin he's traveling tonight um, keep me in prayer that my voice will hold up to the meeting tonight and uh, let's just be praying for each other in here that uh, the Lord gets us ready I wouldn't want to be left behind not one second um, and things just falling apart everywhere so Brother Don would you take these requests before the Lord I'd like for us also to just bow our heads uh, and for just one more prayer request, and uh, that's actually keep Brother Collins in prayer. Uh, he'll be 90 his next birthday. He's still in the pulpit. Uh, he resigned from the tabernacle, and uh, but he started another little work in Jeffersonville, and uh, he was quite happy. They had 86 people there for the first few meetings. So, uh, but they don't have a place yet. Keep them in prayer. They can find a place, and uh, that they can get. Um, that the Lord really blessed him. You know, he was a very faithful servant for 43 years, pastoring the tabernacle. But there's just too much uh, pressure, and I'll just say this from that deity bunch, and uh, um, so, and that's all I'll say about it uh, at this time. But. Um, Anyway, my wife and I are going to go down and visit on Friday and get together for lunch with them. And uh, so I just, just, you know, I, I mean, 90 years old and uh, it having to start over. That's, uh, that's not easy for anybody, but, you know, the fact is that he's 90 and he's still willing to do it. That's wonderful. So, all right. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here, and he is the Amen. He is here, hallelujah. He is here, Amen. He is here, holy, holy. I will bless his name again. He is here, listen closely, hear him calling out your name. He is here, you can touch him, 
you will never be the same he is here hallelujah he is here amen he is here holy holy i will bless his name again he is here to raise the dead and the living he shall change he's the lord come down from heaven he is here the great i am amen let's all stand to our feet now and we'll sing the angel of the lord's favorite song <coughs> Only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only believe, only believe, only believe, only believe. All things are possible, only believe. Jesus, you're here. Jesus, you're here. All things are possible now that you're here. Jesus, you're here, Jesus, you're here, and all things are possible now that you're here. Amen. Let's all remain standing and open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 10. We're going to read from verse 34 to 36. Think not that I, am, that I came to bring peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, a daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his house. In John 12, 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we've read two very strong words from your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And he said that a man would be at variance, he'd be at odds, he'd be at war almost with his own household. And yet you also said if he doesn't hate himself, detest himself, he's not worthy to be yours. Help us, O oh Father, to come to the place where we can look and search our souls. And the only thing worth holding on to is you. May we come to that place, O oh God, so that we can find peace with thee in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, notice Jesus said, He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. The word hateth was translated from the Greek word mizio. It means not only to hate, but it also means to detest, which means to loathe and abhor. Therefore, the actual translation of John twelve twenty five should read, "He that loatheth, lo I mean, he that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that detests his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal." In fact, Jesus says in Luke fourteen twenty six, "If any man come to me." And he hate not, he detests not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. <clears throat> you know, that's why we hear Brother Ram tell us that there is an approach to the birth. And we need to follow the instructions of the new birth or we will never be born again. So we need to know what that approach is and we must know if we have come God's provided way. And that way is the way of death. You must die. And not only die, you must die so bad that you rot to your own self. 
The problem with Christianity today is most people are not willing to die and rot to their own self and thus have never been truly born again. Now, I think at one time you had like 66% of Americans claim to be born again. What a laugh. They haven't even got any idea what to be born again is. Brother Ram said in a sermon, why? He said, you say, well, other people do this. Well, you're not like other people. How many times do you hear that excuse from children and from, from young people in the message, even older people in the message, well, others are doing it. Oh, God, God uh, forgave seven people, you know, uh, their marriage and divorce, so, you know, he can forgive me. I mean, you know, uh, well, anyway. Brother Ramsey, you're not like other people. You are dead. Dead people don't lie. Dead people don't covet thy neighbor's wife. Dead people don't covet thy neighbor's goods. Dead people don't fornicate. Dead people don't um, try to destroy their neighbor's credibility. He says, you didn't take the, you didn't try the toxin. It's just because the people don't want to try it. Now, you've got to die. You've got to rot. That's the trouble of people. Instead of going up to the altar and get some kind of sensation and jump up and down and shake hands with the preacher, go out and get some kind of a dogma or creed and recite it and then say, I belong to so-and-so. And that's exactly what we all come out of. You got the dogma. You got the creed. You got the doctrine. You, you got it, brother. I belong to so-and-so. And I belong to so-and-so. Are you a Christian? I'm so-and-so. A Christian is to be Christ-like. Christ-like is to believe the word. If you don't believe the word, then he ain't, then he can't be Christ-like. But how many, look, you can talk to any denomination, oh, I believe the word. Talk to any Baptist, he'll tell you he believes the word, cover to cover. Does he? Talk to any message person, oh, I believe the word. I believe all the prophets said. Brother Brown said that means you can just read. How can you say you're a Christian and deny half the word? If the Holy Spirit wrote the word, the, whole, the Holy Spirit confirms the word. Where? In you. And the Holy Spirit is the word, and the word abiding in you brings God's promises to every believer. Let me read that again. And the word abiding in you brings God's promises to every believer. Amen. The word means so be it. I believe with all my heart. It's the word of the living God. Amen. And from his sermon, you must be born again, Brother Bram said. And if you still love the things of the world, you're deceived and your sacrifice hasn't been accepted yet. Your nature hasn't been changed. And now do you know what that means to be born again? See, your nature's changed. You become a new creature. You got to die first and then be born again. How many people don't know what it means to die to themselves? From birth pains. Brother Ram said, we know the old seed must, before the new seed can come out of the old seed, it must rot. Absolutely not die only, but rot after it's dead. <clears throat> we know that to be true. That's the same thing in new birth. We, we never go back, but we go forward when you're born again. And that's why I think today that we have so many, not so many, rather genuine new births. is because the seed is, maybe we'll sympathize with the word or the person but they don't want to rot away from the old system that they were in. They don't want to come out of it. They want to stay in the old system and claim the new birth or the message of the age. We found that under Luther, Wesley, Pentecostals, and all other ages, they still try to hold on to the old system and claim this. But the old system age must die and rot in order to bring forth the new one. <clears throat> they still want to cling. Notice that they know the old system is dead. But they just don't want to rot out of it. Now, rot is when it is really done away with. When a claim is made that they are, born, that they are newborn, but a claim is only a begotten sign, rotting brings forth the new birth. You've got to rot away from it, just as we did in all ages, through the Wesleyan and, so, and, all, and all forth. But the thing of it is, after the new birth is born, Wesley or Luther came forth with one word, they, the just shall live by faith. Well, he could not no longer cling onto that old system. He had to come out of it. And then when the Calvinists got to the Anglican church in such a condition under the Calvinistic doctrine, until God raised up an Arminian doctrine, which John Wesley. Now, what's Calvinism? Oh, well, I'm elect, so I can do anything I want to. I'm elect, so, uh, hey, if I, if I go out and lie, steal, drink, whatever, fornicate, hey, God's got to forgive me because he elected me. Like I had a young man tell me one time, you probably heard the story. This is number, what, number 15? 
Anyway, he came to me after service. He said, brother, he was just bawling in tears. I, was, I preached, uh, actually, Brother Vale's sermon, Righteousness and Unrighteousness. And I preached it in two series, in a series you know, two sermons, and uh, he came bawling his head off. He said, brother, I, I, he, said, he said, I've always believed that I was God's elect seed. I was raised to believe that. But what you're saying tonight is I'm not even born again. I said, that's right, brother, you're not. Now, people don't like you to tell them that. What am I supposed to say? Yeah, don't worry about it, brother. God be with you. He'll lead you through. And then you die and go to hell and point your finger at me at the white throne and say, why didn't you tell me? I'm going to tell you. If it, look, I'm going to tell you the truth whether you want to stay here and listen to it or not. People don't like that. They don't like my preaching. They don't like holiness preaching. And they don't like a preacher who tells them the truth and looks in their eye and tells them. They'd rather have it fluffed over somehow and made soft and gentle so that, you know, we can all be sweet, we can all be happy. I'm not that way. God made me this way for a purpose. And if i got to preach to the four posts, I'll preach to the four posts. But I know there's a few elect in here that'll want to hear it anyway. He said, the old system had to die in order for the new one to come on. And when Wesley's age ceased, and all the little ages or blades that came out of, on the stalk of the tassel in Wesley's time, see, when Pentecost comes out with the restoration of the gifts, they had to come out of the Baptist, Presbyterian, Pilgrim Holiness, Nazarene, Church of Christ, so-called, and all of that. They had to come out of it, rot away from it, to accept the new birth. You're always called crazy, but it's like Paul said when he rotted out, and once he claimed, he said, in the way that they call heresy, that's the way I worship the God of our fathers, in the way that's called heresy. See, he, he'd accepted the new life, that the Old Testament had given birth to, to the new, and he had to rot away from the old. Just make it a shadow in order to be. That, that just where we are at, that's just where we are at now. Now bear with me, that's, but that's my idea. The churches has got so systematically till you can't get into one lest you belong to one. You've got to have a fellowship card or some kind of an identification. I'm going to tell you, he's saying that about the message. I can't go preach. In, I couldn't go preach up north. I couldn't go preach in, out west. There's a whole lot of churches. Listen, about 99% of the churches wouldn't have me because I'm not in their camp. And I won't stand in any camp. So they don't want you because you've got to be one of them in order for them to have you. That's, that's exactly what he said here. <laughs> that's not out there in boogie-boogie denominationals. That's in the denominational message people. He said, you've got to have a fellowship card or some kind of an identification. And by believing this, the only door I, I nearly have open is this businessman. And as long as they're not an organization, I can go with them and, and get to bring the message that I feel that's on my heart to the people. But it's got so systematically, and I love you Pentecostal people, and the Pentecost is not an organization anyhow. You just call yourself that. Pentecost is an experience and not a denomination. But you see, the thing of it is, that's so hard for so many, for many men is when they look at it and believe it and see it so identified by God in the Word, yet it's so hard to rot away from that thing you've been in. <clears throat> what would I do? Where would I get my meal? What? God is your meal. God is the thing for you to hold on to. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and I'll leave it lay that there. You, you know what I'm talking about. I would just wish you would have kept on. I love that kind of preaching. The hotter, the better. Now, from the next paragraph in our study of the token, Brother Branham says in paragraph 73, he said, when the Jewish church faded out, the Gentile taken it over in that perversion like that. Remember, the Jews were perverted. They, they, they totally rejected the word made flesh. The word they claimed to believe, the Messiah they came, claimed to be looking for, came and they totally rejected it because of organization. <coughs> and Brother Branham said, the Gentile taken it over in that perversion like that. Now she's come out to, that, uh, to get that remnant of the Gentile, uh, for his namesake, the bride. See what I mean? See what the scripture is speaking of here? If the token was not displayed, then the covenant was not effective. See, it must be. Because if you say you believe and you don't follow the instructions of the word, then you don't believe. See, though you be circumcised, join you, uh, uh, though you join, though you're baptized... You've done all these things like that. That still isn't the token, the Holy Ghost. Deny one word, you're an unbeliever. 
Deny John 14, 12. You're an unbeliever. That's it. You're gone. You're lost. The problem is they have in the following... the. They have in following the instructions that the very first instruction, you must die to be born again, and they don't even get to point number one. Peter said, repent, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the Holy, uh, gift of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> well, they, they, they bypass the repenting. That means changing your thinking. That, you know what it really means? It means you've got to die. Because you don't go under the water unless you've been dead. You don't get buried unless you're a dead person. You don't bury live people. But they do it anyway. In his sermon, you must be born again. Brother Brown tells us what that process is. He says, yes, to be born again, you must go through a process of death. Everything does. You take a grain of corn, and if that corn ever expects to live again, it's got to die first. I would like a little homework assignment for all of you. Just do some word searches on dying to yourself. With the prophet, with the, with the Bible. Find as many scriptures as you can. Post them on Facebook, whatever. But just, you're going to find it's everywhere. Brother Branham preaches every place about dying to yourself. It's got to die first. If a grain of wheat ever expects to live again, it's totally impossible for the, that corn, that wheat, that flower, that tree, or that grass, or that vegetable, everything that expects to live again must die first. Then how are you going to escape it? You got to die first. You got to die. Die how? To yourself. Die to everything so that you can be born again. You got to do that. If you don't die, you can never live again. <clears throat> you know why people don't die? They think they do. They have a little boo-hoo and they think that, well, it's over. But there's still parts of themselves that they like. Parts of themselves they want to hold on to. Then they never died. I don't know how many times I've baptized people and I tried to push them under one sister one time pushed, pushed up here feet went up pushed down here head went up tried to hold down both sides something else came up you know just they didn't die completely and those people always 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 they go off into the world later on because they never died they were never fully buried and people in this message all, almost all of them claim to be born again. They think they're born again, but the Baptist isn't. They're born again, but the Pentecostal isn't. And they're just as starchy and just as denominational as the denominations are. Because they haven't died to themselves and humbled down. And realized that you are nothing if you don't have God in you. Because the only good thing, I remember when I went through it, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, there's not one good thing about you except for me. And I said, Father, then I, I want you. I don't want Brian Kosorek. I want Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why do you think we've had so many leave this church over the years? <clears throat> if we had everybody that claimed this is their church home, we would have 200 and probably 50 to 300 people in this church. They don't want to hear this kind of preaching. But let me tell you something. Without this kind of preaching, you will never make the rapture. I'm certain of that. If you love yourself, you're still lost. If you detest yourself, then you're ready to be filled with his spirit because you're willing to die to yourself. And you cannot ever be born again until you first die to yourself. That is, thus saith the voice of God to this generation. For God's voice of this generation said in his sermon, you must be born again. He said, now the approach to this birth, there is an approach to it. And the approach to this birth, you have to go through the process just like anything that lives. Anything that lives again has got to die first. And you cannot keep your same spirit. You cannot keep your same habits. You cannot keep your same thoughts. You've got to die. You've got to die like he died. You've got to die on his altar like, Ad, like Abel did. Um, uh, 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 with his lamb. You got to die with your lamb. You got to die. Die to your own thinking to be born into his thinking. Let the mind that was in Christ be in you. You got to think his thoughts. And now, brother, sister, let me say this as intelligent as I know how to say it. How can you think his own thoughts and deny his word and yet claim that you're born again? Just ask yourself that question. How can you do it? You can't. If you're born again, you got his thoughts. If the mind of Christ is in you, then you are a new creature. The Bible teaches that, and if any brother would, uh, would like to, 
Well, you find the creature, look up the word creature up in the lexicon, you find the word creature, uh, there's interpreted or translated a new creation. Because you are a new creation. Uh, you are a one creation, a human being born in sexual desire here on earth, and now you're a new creation born by spirit. Your, your own thoughts are dead. They're so dead until they're crystal like the brass serpent, or like he died when the heavens and the earth and everything witnessed that he was dead. <coughs> Again, from his sermon, you must be born again. The voice of God to this generation said, now it must die. Now, that don't mean turn a new page this year, uh, you know, this new year. You say, well, Brother Ram, I, I've been coming here for a long time. I've been a member of the church. This new year is I'm going to turn a new page and start new. That don't mean that. Now, not turn a new page, but actually die and be born again. See, you've got to feel so guilty when you stand in his presence. Whether you go to Methodist way or the Baptist way or whatever way you go, you've got to be so guilty and feel so guilty till it'll kill you. Oh, I remember having that experience myself on my hands and knees before God. And, and I, I felt so guilty before God. I thought if I even lift my head, the same angel that stood there with the blazing sword that, that uh, would not allow Adam and Eve back in the garden. I felt he was standing right behind me. I could feel him. And I thought if I lifted my head, my head would be rolling across the floor. That's how real he was to me. And he said, but actually dying be born again. And you've got to feel so guilty when you stand in his presence, whether you're Methodist way or Baptist way or whatever way you might be. You've got to be so guilty and feel so guilty till it kills you. It'll kill you. That's right. It'll kill you. Your worldly life will die right there. You've got to reckon yourself so guilty in the presence of God until your worldly life dies right there. The sin question is over uh, for you when you're standing in his presence. When you look like that, you're sure to live because you die. And the only way that you can live again is to die first so that you can live again. Now, you see, you see what I'm coming to, don't you? See that? What the new birth is? The new birth? First to die in order to be born again. And if you still got the things of the world in you, you're not born again. I don't care if you're raising this message. I don't care how long you've been around this message. <clears throat> I don't care if you attended Brother Bram's messages, sermons. Until you've died first and rotted and considered yourself such a detestable thing. And listen, you can't go around with your nose up in the air looking down at other people when you see yourself as detestable. All of that stupid stuff, childish, religious, churchianity is gone. And if you still got the things of the world in you, you're not born again. And how are you claiming, going to claim to be born again and still with the things of the world hanging on you? See, how can you do it? And from sirs, we would see Jesus. If he's the true disciple of Christ, he'll lead you to the cross. Oh, Brother Bram, I went out and spoke in tongues. That don't mean nothing. A mule to that one time. Yes, sir, that's right. Yeah, I don't mean to make fun of God's holy word, but I believe in speaking in tongues, but the devil speaks in tongues. People can't speak in tongues and live any old kind of life. But I mean that the devil's got a copy of everything that God did, and he can copy everything but the genuine birth of Christ. And he can't do that because you have to die first. Then the world raises you up. How do you know when you're alive? When that word, every word of it, is made flesh in you. Write that on the palm of your hand. Don't ever forget that. Everything that the Bible says, you say the same thing, and it comes to pass just exactly like he said it. You know what that is? John 5, 19. The Son can do nothing but what the Father shows him what to do first. Then the Son doeth likewise. That's when it is. When your spirit agrees with him, he is the word. <clears throat> when your spirit agrees with that, uh, what he said, and the spirit makes itself manifest through his word, then you're living, see? You're through shopping then and swapping and all the rest of it. It's all settled. And from the message why, he says, Oh, in the hour of your death, in the hour of your death, how you long to hear that. Let the water and the blood from the flowing wounds apply. Be for sin a double cure, safe from wrath, and make me pure. You're here to die now. The only way that you can be born again is to die first so that you can be born again. Now, there's no way, there's no other way to be born again. Therefore, if you have not died to yourself and rotted to yourself, you have never been born again and you have never experienced a new birth. Now, look, too many of you still love yourselves. 
You won't even admit when you have totally messed up. You look for excuses to put it back on the preacher. So many people do that. I know because I, I, I've had to deal with so much unbelief. And not only people who left this church and unbelievers I've met all over the world, but even some that are still here. You get your feelings hurt by something I say when I'm just quoting the word of God and the prophet of God to this generation. And the first thing is you run off and ask the people why they left. Right there you put yourself outside the word because the Bible says they went out from among us because they were not of us. Oh, the poor fellow, he got his feelings hurt. That mean old preacher. He doesn't even consider your feelings. Well, let me tell you something. If what I tell you is from God's word or his prophet, then you have no right to have feelings, your feelings hurt. The only reason you have your feelings hurt is because you have not died to yourself. A dead man doesn't get upset. A dead man doesn't get his feelings hurt. A dead man doesn't kick when he's been kicked. <clears throat> the Holy Ghost says amen to every word of God. You know, I've noticed that the older people in this message can take harder preaching. But the younger generation has been so, uh, I'll put it this way, so dumbed down into political correctness that if a preacher preaches hell and fire and brimstone, they get offended. Jesus said, blessed is he that's not offended in me. Jesus took ropes. He, up, he, he, he whipped them right out of the temple. There's your lamb nature. Huh? When it came to the word of God, he did not compromise one little iota. And you shouldn't either. The Holy Ghost says amen to every word. I'm just going to say something you may not know. Hell is filled with a whole lot of people who left the word of God and their post of duty to be gathered around that word because they got their feelings hurt. You know that? Brother Ram called them hothouse plants. From be not afraid, he said, you know what? A genuine original plant, you don't have to spray it. No, sir. Bugs won't get to it. It's that hothouse plant that you have to spray. That's what the matter is. You have to spray and baby and pet around with so-called Christians. You tell them you can't do this, and oh well, now I, I just tell you, I, I got a right. There you are, see? That's a hothouse plant. They can't stand nothing in the beginning. You see, that's right. What you need is an original old digging out and tearing down, and as I said last night, clean out the nest and start over again. That's right. You can make deacons out of them and everything else, but it'll never do no good. Pat them on the back and call them brother. But until they're born again of the Spirit of God, they're just a nest full of rotten eggs. It's like Brother Val said to me when we first began, we started out with 28 people. Within a few months, we were up to 63, then to 75. Brother Val said, what's going on down there? I said, well, I'm just a new kid on the block. I was 29 years old, pastoring a church. I said, you just watch. Give them a year. Year come, down to 35. Then they started coming back, or not coming back. We started getting more, up to 65 again. Brother Rail quoted me the scripture, the, where there are no oxen, the crib is clean. You preach the word and preach it hot, brother, sister, you won't have people hanging around. Not, not unless they're real genuine Christians. Soldiers of the cross, not these make-believers we have today. But it'll never do no good. Pat them on the back and call them brother, but... But until they are born again of the Spirit of God, they're just a nest full of rotten eggs. That's all. They'll never hatch. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I, I don't mean some dry handshake said, well, have you, did you get the Holy Ghost? Yeah, when I shook hands with the pastor, when I accepted Jesus as my Savior. Brother, that ain't Bible doctrine. Paul found a bunch of good thoroughbred Baptists up there, and he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Not when you believe, but after you believed, have you received the Holy Ghost? It's, it's a personal experience that comes. And when that great, unchangeable God sent his message down, it never changes. Amen. From perseverance, he said, that woman wasn't that type. He's talking about the woman that Jesus said to her. He said, uh, when she came in, she wanted healing. He said, uh, it's not me to give the children's bread to dogs. 
Now, I've never called anybody in this church a dog. Jesus did. He told that woman, he says, not fit to give God's children's bread to, to you dogs. And she said, those most notable words, but even the dogs eat the crumbs off the children's table, off the master's table. <clears throat> he says, she wasn't no hybrid. She got a hold of something. You didn't have to baby her and spray her. And, and, and now, darling, please, now, let me beg you. You, you should, come na uh, should come down. No, sir, nobody. Everything's trying to hinder her. A real Christian fights for his position. He has to stand alone, him and God, and he fights every inch of ground so you don't have to baby them around. That's what's the matter with the Pentecostal church today. We got Pentecostal babies that's just been sprinkled and sprayed uh, with this, that, and the other till it's run out to a bunch of hybrids. What we need today is a house cleaning from the pulpit all the way down to the janitor and, start, and, and starting over again and get some genuine faith born into the people. Amen. <clears throat> from perseverance she said they no good everything's now now is hybrid is hybrid even they got hybrid churches hybrid christians took in by shaking of hands and they can dress better they can maybe use better english and so forth like that ain't got no life in it you take a big fine ear of co uh, corn hybrid maybe it's twice as pretty as the other one plant it it'll die ain't got no life in it that's right we don't want nothing hybrid we want the genuine thing if you haven't got it, stay there till it comes. Why accept a substitute when the Pentecostal skies are full of the real? See, nothing hybrid. It won't stand. You, you, you have to always spray a hybrid plant. Keeps the bugs off of it. That's the way with some of these hybrid Christians. You have to baby them and pet them and promise them that, uh, well, that, uh, promise them that they'll be, be deacon or something else. Keep some of the woolly bugs from them or unbelief. They'll get out of the church. Kick them out anyway. That's right. They never was in. Well, I, suppose, I thought we were supposed to run after everybody that left. That's not what my Bible says. Vindicated prophet of God here says they'll get out of the church, kick them out anyway. Let them go. Now, in the Gospel of Mark and Matthew, look, we're getting down to the very few. And I'm talking about the election of God are going to make a rapture because they're born again. All the game players, all the, all the people hanging on just to be in church, just to have a social thing to do, <clears throat> they're lost. They're not, even, they're not born again, and if you're not born again, you are a lost being. You're lost. If you have any message for them, it's repent. Get on your knees and don't get off your knees until you're born again, until you've had a real genuine experience with the Holy Ghost. In the Gospel of Mark and Matthew, we hear Jesus rebuke a woman who came to him asking him for healing. Mark 7, 27, But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. What if you went up to Jesus and asked him for something he told you? Go away, Fido. Go away, dog. Oh, I tell you what, people of this hour, They'd never don that church step again. Shows an elect. Matthew 15, 26. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And today this younger generation has been so indoctrinated into political correctness that they get offended so easily. But not this lady. She wasn't a hybrid Christian. She was a real genuine article of God. And look at her reply. Matthew 7, 28. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. <laughs> I might be a dog. Yet the dogs... Under the table, eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the de devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. <coughs> How do you expect to get anything from God if you're just playing games? Well, I'll come to church on Sunday, put in my time. Maybe the relatives are there. They might see me. I feel sorry for people like that. Look what God's voice to this generation told us about this woman from Perseverant. If Jesus would have said, I'm not sent to you Anglican, I'm not sent to you Pentecostals, your bunch, your assembly of God, your church of God, you, whatever you was, I wasn't sent to you. You're nothing but a bunch of dogs. Oh my. I'd have seen that disappointed look and saying, well, 
I won't have nothing to do with him at all. Wasn't right to begin with. I'll just go back over to my church, to my own church, but not her. She had faith. She wasn't a hotbed plant, a hybrid. Like some of them today that call themselves uh, believers. Can't sit still a minute to the gospel. That's what we got today, a bunch of hotbed plants. You have to baby them all the time, keep them sprayed, the bugs off of them. That's right. Baby them like a kitten, rubbing his fur one way and he'll purr. But rub it back once and shows what's in him. That's right. That certainly is true. She wasn't a, hot, a hybrid. Anything that's hybrid is disgraceful. From the meanest man I know, he said a hybrid product can never stand the roughness and the treatment that the original can stand. And remember, the Bible says if you can't take chastisement, he's a bastard born. He's not a child of God. Why, an old longhorn would starve one of your herfers to death out on the prairie in the wintertime. She can, she can make her own way like a deer, but your hybrid Hereford, your hybrid Brahma Angus, it, it'd die out there. You have to baby them. And if he was standing today, I believe he'd say something like, like, like it to us. Not only have we hybrided fruit and animals, but we've hybrided religion. Has to be babied and petted. It's not the original. We try to take the word of God and breed it into something else and breed it over here and it becomes a bunch of delicate babies that we, are, that, that we have to baby. And they can't take the real word. We might have been saying something like that. Then he might have said, you see, really, your lives are hybrid. Father said, don't touch the tree. But Satan said, he won't hurt you. So therefore, your life is now in a hybrid condition. And that life cannot go back to itself because it's hybrid. <clears throat> you, see, you see why so many people who claim to believe this message are nothing but hot, hothouse plants? It's because they are afraid to die totally to themselves. They're still holding on to things in their own life that they don't want to let go. From the message why Brother Brown said, but as long as there's any hope for it not to rot, new life won't come. Well, Lord, I hate this about myself. But you know, over here I'm kind of a pretty good, pretty good shape over here, Lord. But I really hate this part of myself. You know what? You'll never get born again that way. Until you can look through your own facade and see how despicable your life is without Christ. That's why we get up from the altar so many times without the Holy Spirit, because we don't rot enough to our own ideas. We got to meet God on his level. I like to meet him there, because that he never has failed me. The new birth is no different from any other birth, and it's a mess. You ought to see what mess I was in when I got it. And every once in a while, when it comes upon me again, I get messy again with it. I cry and boo-hoo and carry on until I, I guess I don't look very good to look at. But I got something on the inside of me that's taking me on and on and on and on and on. It's new life. I don't care what it looks like. I want to know what it is. That's the main thing. <clears throat> and in closing, from way back, Brother Brown said, now you know. The reason they do it, they're afraid of that new birth. I mean the real new birth. Oh, everybody says, sure, I believe that you must be born again. Yes, sir. Yes. But when it comes to the real birth, they believe the new birth by shaking hands, saying a bunch of creeds or something like another. They call that the new birth. That ain't the new birth. They're afraid of the new birth. Now listen, any birth is a mess. I don't care whether it's a pig pen or whether, it, whether it's, at, uh, it's a mess, any birth. And so is a new birth. It'll make you do things that you didn't think that you would ever do. But it brings life. And, there, and, and before you can have life, you have to have death. Before a seed can reproduce itself, it's got to die in order, and not only die, but it's got to rot. In order to get new life out of it, it's got to die and rot in itself, and so does every sinner. And every man, no matter how highly he's educated and how much he's polished, how many degrees he has in the church and so forth, how many of those things, how many college he's educated out of, he's got to die to his own theory. He's got to die to himself. He's got to die to everything to be reborn again by the Holy Ghost. And it'll make him cry and boo-hoo and, and speak in tongues and jump up and down and carry on like a maniac. But he's got a new life. And that's what it takes to do it. He's got to have new life. They're afraid of the new birth. The new birth is a mess. And as I said, how many people have really gone through that? Oh, well, I accepted the doctrine of uh, the Prusia. <clears throat> Therefore, I've got it, brother. Well, I, I believe that there's one God. He had a son. I got it, brother. Do you? 
Brother Brown said, you could say you believe it and even rest in it. But he said, until you've wrought it. Until you've applied that token. You're still lost. You know, the churches that need this preaching the most wouldn't let me in near the half a mile. From it is I, be not afraid, Brother Brown said. Now, if that light doesn't do the same works that it did when it was in the Son of God, then it isn't the same one. It isn't. But if it does the same works, like, just like Jesus said, if you could take all the life out of an apple tree, every bit of the life, and transfer the life of the pear tree into the apple tree, it would bring forth pears, see, because the life's in it. That's what it bears. The fruit is in the life, of course, and that's the same thing here. If you put the life of Christ and take the life out of the sinner, he has to die first. And then when the life of Christ comes into him, then he will produce the life of Christ because that's what's living in him. See? He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, because his life is in him. That if the life isn't there, don't go around saying, do you see Jesus in me? Because I'll tell you, just like I told one person, no, I don't. And I don't because you've not been born again. And you've not been born again because you've done this, 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 and God would never, ever put his Holy Spirit into an unholy vessel. So instead of saying, thank you, brother, I'll go pray about those things. No, they go around saying, I'm, I'm, I'm hard-hearted, I'm evil. Listen, I wouldn't tell people those things if I wasn't trying to help them. But like Brother Brown said, you pour the, mess of, the, the, the medicine down, they spit it back in your face. From Colossians 3 and 1, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you appear with him in glory. <clears throat> and from water separation, Brother Ransom, you've got to be absolutely accept the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, but you've got to die yourself. You've got to die to every thought of the flesh so that you can receive the mind of Christ and walk from henceforth. Not of your own, but of his mind. The mind of Christ in you. That's the only way that you can stay alive. That's the only way I can stay alive. That's all I live for or live by is by the Holy Spirit. That's why Brother Branham, who you could tell the way he lived, that man had died to a man called William Branham. He totally died because you saw totally Jesus Christ in him. From Romans 8 and 11, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to self to live after the self, for if you live after the self, you shall die. So then, but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of your flesh, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. <clears throat> now, here's a, here's a real key. Are you living for self? That I'll tell you right there. From God's wrapped gifts, Brother Brown said, there's another pathetic thing. I think that one of the most pathetic words that Jesus ever said was when he, when he said, Father, I sanctify myself that they might be sanctified. In other words, he did it for us so that we, we would. He was the example so that we would follow. I sanctify myself that they might be sanctified. In other words, he had a right. He was a man. He, was a right, he had a right to a home. He had a right to a family. He, he was a man. As much man as you and I are a man, or I am, as much human in his manhood as we were, he had a right to it. But he was training 12 men that was going to take the gospel to all the world, so he sanctified himself for their sake. I sanctify myself for their sake. A gift of God, keeping himself sanctified. Oh, gifts of God, you people who claim that you've received his spirit, keep yourself sanctified. Yes, sir, keep away from the things of the world, be sanctified. Oh, my. He was our example. If you're walking in that example, you will put aside things that you normally would want to do because others are watching you. You're either an example or you're not an example. And from lamb and the dove, and that I'll tell you out right there, the lamb and the dove, two natures saying, <clears throat> dove of the lamb. While you're listening, the most outstanding scripture, one of them that I can think of, is when Jesus said, Father, now think of it, Father, for their sake I sanctify myself. Now think of it, Father, for their sake I sanctify myself. What was he doing? Setting the example. He was a lamb, 
What did he do? He had a right to a home. He was a man. He had a right to be married. He was a man. He had a right to good clothes. He was a man. But he sanctified himself. He forfeited. He could have come down from the corridors of glory, a full statued man with an angelic band. Sure. But he sanctified himself. He could, he could have at least been born in a nice clean bed somewhere, but he was born in a manger over a manure pile in a borrowed manger. <coughs> but he sanctified himself. Why? He was a lamb. See, friends, we got, to back, we got to back to assembly line religions and so forth, and all these things that were getting away from the real thing. Humble yourself. Keep humble. And say, Lord... Sanctify me. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we want only one thing. And that is to be such a reflector of you. That people will not see us. They'll only see you. Help us to die. Help us to die that you might live again in us. As your prophet said, take my body, God. I'll loan it to you. I'll give it to you. Whatever you can do with it, Lord. And that's my desire, O oh God. And I believe that's the desire of your bride. She wants to so please you that she doesn't even think of herself. She thinks only of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To be like Jesus To be like Jesus on earth I long to be like Him. Let's start over. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, on earth I long to be like Him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, I only ask to be like Him. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, on earth I long to be like Him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, I only ask to be like Him. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, on earth I long to be like Him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, I only have to be like Him. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, on earth I long to be like Him.